If I saw mice running around looking like this, I would probably evacuate for fear of radioactive poisoning. But this mouse seems perfectly happy. The truth of the matter is, the mouse is glowing because its hair follicle stem cells are tagged with green fluorescent protein, or GFP. GFP was first isolated from the jellyfish A. victoria, sometimes called the crystal jelly. In the 1960s, Osamu Shimomura was researching the phenomenon of bioluminescence and isolated a protein called a corin. However, a corin gave off blue light, yet the jellyfish was glowing green. It turns out that a corin's blue light excited a second protein, called green fluorescent protein, which in turn emitted green light. So what was the big deal? Well, it wasn't until much later that someone realized how valuable a protein like GFP could be. In 1987, Douglas Prasher had the groundbreaking idea to use GFP as a tracer molecule for proteins, or viruses, or whatever, that are too small to be seen, even under an electron microscope. He suggested inserting the gene for constructing GFP into the gene for a protein, right before the stop codon, so the cell would produce a GFP attached to the protein. Prasher hypothesized that GFP could be useful not only as a fluorescent tag showing the location of a protein, but also as a reporter molecule. If instead GFP was linked to a specific promoter region, it would fluoresce where and when the gene of interest was switched on. Sadly, Prasher's funding ran out, so he sent a copy of GFP to Martin Chalfie. A graduate student in Chalfie's lab, Gia Yuskerchen, succeeded in incorporating the GFP gene into E. coli, which then fluoresced green under UV light. GFP is perfect for use as a tracer molecule for three reasons. First, it is easy to detect. It fluoresces green under UV light. Second, it is a small protein, so it is less likely to hinder the protein of interest actual function. Finally, GFP fluoresces without the addition of any other chemicals. For example, a corin requires calcium ions and coelacin terazine, and firefly luciferase requires ATP, magnesium, and luciferin to fluoresce. In more recent years, Roger Chen has studied exactly how GFP's structure produced green fluorescence, and then used his knowledge to create a whole collection of molecules that fluoresce at different wavelengths. Shimomura, Chalfi, and Chen split the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2008. So let's back up. How exactly does the structure of GFP allow it to fluoresce? GFP is a small protein consisting of only 238 residues and weighing 27 kilodaltons. It has a unique beta can shape. 11 beta strands containing 9 to 13 residues each make up a nearly perfectly cylindrical beta barrel, 42 angstroms long and 24 angstroms in diameter. The secondary structure also includes five alpha helices, one of which runs through the middle of the barrel and is covalently bonded to the chromophore. The chromophore, consisting of the three amino residues serine, tyrosine, and glycine, is responsible for GFP's fluorescence. Chen et al. discovered that this tripeptide sequence is post-translationally modified in order to link the two pi systems of the rings and form a more conjugated system, lending stability to the fluorophore. This process is referred to as maturation and happens spontaneously, that is, no known cofactors or enzymes are required. The animation shows the maturation of enhanced green fluorescent protein, a man-made mutant of wild-type GFP, in which serine is replaced by threonine. Rearrangements occur so that nucleophilic attack from the glycine residue onto the threonine can create a new ring, followed by spontaneous dehydration. During and after the chromophore maturation, the final structure and its intermediates are stabilized by interactions including van der Waals, electrostatic forces, and hydrogen bonds with neighboring residues and water molecules. The chromophore does not fluoresce without the scaffolding of the properly folded GFP. The beta can functions to exclude solvent molecules, preventing the energy of the chromophore from being quenched and thereby allowing it to fluoresce. Scientists have engineered a wide variety of fluorescein GFP derivatives by describing point mutations or tweaking the chromophore structure. In 1995, the Chen lab discovered an S65T point mutation that increased fluorescent intensity, increased photostability, and shifted the major excitation peak to 488 nanometers. These improvements facilitated the widespread use of GFP. Many other slight mutations continued to improve the protein. A whole host of color mutants were also created. The key to creating color mutants is slight modification of the chromophore. However, scientists must be careful. Because GFP fluorescence is dependent on the structures surrounding the chromophore, mutations that denature the protein even a little destroy fluorescence. There is a nearly endless list of applications for GFP. It is commonly used as a reporter gene, which indicates whether a certain gene is being expressed in a cell or organism population. GFP can be used to examine viruses, record neuron membrane potential, and even track cancer cells. GFP has also redefined fluorescence microscopy. Unlike the fluorescent proteins used before it, GFP is not phototoxic and therefore allowed the development of live cell fluorescence microscopy systems that observe cells over extended periods of time. This type of analysis has improved understanding of biological systems such as protein folding and transport, which never before could be studied using live systems. A new exciting use of GFP is as part of a living laser. 
A cell containing enhanced GFP is placed inside a reflective container and hit with pulses of blue light, which bounce around the cavity and pass through the cell several times before being emitted as uniform laser light. Researchers suspect that any cellular change would be reflected, no pun intended, in the light output and are attempting to extract information about cells from their optical properties. And of course, you can always just stick GFP onto any cell in your pet or make art that works too. Chromophore, consisting of the three amino acidu acidus, coelin, terazine, coelin, all right, yeah, science words are hard. A whole host of color mutate, mutates, mutates. I can't talk today. I can't, I can't do it.